Hi there, Ryan Rastel here for Golfshake.com and we're down on the short game area at Howley Hall Golf Club taking a look at the new Glide 3.0 wedges from Ping. Following on from the success that Ping's had with its previous um, Glide wedges, so Glide and Glide 2.0, Glide 3 comes with all of the th all of the technologies you'd expect with those wedges plus a few little differences so there's four very distinct different head types and designs of which we have an example of each here so we've got the tour sole so basically one that's ground off a little bit at the back you can open the face a little bit um, slightly different camber to the sole there we've got the wide sole which is really great out of bunkers, something that's going to give you a bit more bounce or maybe for someone who plays on golf courses where the turf is a little bit softer. We've got the, um, the uh, square sole, so the standard sole, basically um, same width all the way across, sort of mid bounce uh, designed for differing ground conditions, um, but generally something that's going to be great for if you've got the face square playing a, a shot with. Um, and then we have the very funky i2 inspired head, which um, many of you will have been familiar with i2 from years ago. It's a very, very popular shape. A lot of companies tried to um, adopt this technology. So we've seen high toe wedges in a few different brands. We've seen the Phil Mickelson design ones as well with Callaway, which really are born from um, the look of a, an i2 wedge. So um, Ping, have bought this into the Glide 3 range. Um, slightly higher toe, so that shifts the center of gravity up, helps with um, controlling the flight a little bit, but also has a nice um, sole camber there, so you can open the face on it, you can play some different shots as well, and it's something that it might not suit everybody's eye when they sit it down, but it certainly um, looks great behind the ball. I'm, I'm a big fan of it. So let's try a few shots with each of the different head designs, see what they do. Uh, we're going to play some pitch shots, we're going to play a few chips around the green and some bunker shots as well. So you can really see how these different head designs perform in different situations you'll find yourself in on the golf course. So to start off with, we've got the standard sole in a 54 degree um, sand wedge and we're just going to play a little pitch shot of about 40 yards to a flag over there and see how it performs when it hits the green and I'll give you a bit of feedback as I hit it. Now, straight away sat behind the ball, very traditional look to a wedge, what I'm used to seeing really behind the ball. The biggest difference with the ping ones is it has this little extra shorter groove on the bottom edge there. So if you're a person who maybe does thin the occasional one or doesn't strike it great, it's still going to give you the benefit of actually hitting a groove there where normally it would come off, you know, obviously very low with very little spin. So let's just play a couple of shots here. So just a little 40 yard pitch towards that flag. So with it being a 54, we can see that it's coming in nice and low and running up the green there. Feels very, very soft off the face. It's really nice actually. Um, but like I say, it's more of the sort of traditional shape that I would, I would see and what I like looking down on when I'm playing a sand wedge. Um, and the flight is potentially a little bit lower than, than I would normally see. Um, I mean, I, no, I normally use a 56 in a sand wedge. This being a 54 is that little bit stronger in loft. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like I say, it feels really, really nice off the club face. The flight is nice. We're getting a nice bit of run out on it when it hits the green as well. But yeah, I mean, really, really nice looking wedge. So we'll just hit one more and let's try one of the other different sole designs there as well. So we also have in a sand wedge, we've got a 56 degree in the wide sole. So this is gonna be better for that player who tends to maybe take a bit more turf when they, when they pitch and chip, or maybe someone who plays on a golf course where the ground is a little bit softer and has got a bit more give there. So we'll play a few of the same, these little pitch shots. Very different flight, the very different feel as this wedge hits the ground with that bit more kind of uh, meat on the back edge of the golf club, if you like. It's, uh, it definitely feels very different to the uh, standard sole wedge there. Um, I'm someone who tends to not need that much bounce because of the way that I strike it, but um, this one I can really feel the back edge of the club 
as I'm playing the shot, I can feel the back edge clipping the ground. I can really feel that bounce sort of interacting with the turf a little bit more. So it's a very, very different feel to what we've seen in the, in the standard sole. So let's have a bit of a look at the I2, okay? So like I've said, not for everybody. It's not a look everybody's gonna like. This is in a 60 degree, which only has eight degrees of bounce. So not as high a bounce as the two that we've tried so far, but let's hit a few of these same little 40 yard pitch shots. So I might have to hit this one a little bit harder, but much higher flight. You can really feel it grabbing the club face and spinning nicely as well um, when you're playing this shot. I mean, it, it's a shape that I wouldn't traditionally like, but it actually, the way it sits behind the ball looks great. It feels great off the club face as well. The flight, by virtue of the fact that it's a bit more lofted, is a bit higher and you can see it's spinning a little bit more, but I don't think it would take much getting used to, even for a player who maybe doesn't like the shape of the head that much i think you would probably get used to it quite quickly and it would certainly give you that performance benefit let's go into the torso so this is more like the sort of wedge that i would be um, using myself um, a little bit more grind off the back edge there only six bounce in this 60 degree so it's going to play a little bit more precise through the turf that that bounce isn't going to interact quite as much which I quite like so the strike sounds a bit more solid we're getting a bit lower flight with a bit more check on it um, that's the kind of wedge shot that I I tend to hit and and quite like hitting so it's a flatter flight that just grabs up as it hits the turf so I find that so much easier to do when you've got a wedge that's ground like this um, and it's it's really, really nice to use and nice to hit. So um, yeah, I mean, like I say, I knew this was gonna be the wedge that I liked the best, but from a, for a pitching perspective, um, they're all great. They all feel really good, potentially for that player who struggles a bit with pitching. So the wider sole or the eye sole might help you a little bit more, but let's go try it with a normal greenside chip shot and see how they perform from there as well. So now we've got a greenside chip of about 15 yards. So we're just going to play that with each of the different grinds again and see how they perform for this type of shot. So to start with, same as last time, I've got the standard sole. Um, we'll just sit that down in the 54. So this is the sort of club I would probably use from this type of distance anyway. Again, feels great off the face. The sole grind really, really suits this type of shot. It's got a little bit more grind on than maybe the tour sole that we'll see in a minute, but like I say, feels really good off the turf, easy to strike. It's good, nice bit of spin on it as well when you hit it. Nice low kind of checky flight, which is kind of what I'm used to hitting as it comes in. Really, really good. So let's try the slightly wider sold one as well now then. So a bit more bounce on this. Again in a sand wedge, so it's a 56. We'll try and play a few with that as well. Slightly different in the way it comes off the face. It feels, feels slightly different when you're hitting it. I can really feel that, that bounce hitting the ground and the back edge catching the ground a little bit more there, which um, was definitely evident when we were hitting the pitch shots as well. But again, looks pretty much the same behind the ball as the standard sole one did, but you can really feel that bounce actually working and, and helping you. So like I say, if you're that type of player who, you know, scoops it a little bit and, and maybe plays on a course with softer, softer turf, that's going to be good for you. So let's try this funky I2 one as well. So this is a bit more lofted, so it's probably a shot that's going to come in a bit higher, but Again, feels really good. Loads of spin on it as well when it's hitting the ground. Um, checks quite quickly. The feel is very, very similar to all the others as you'd expect, but very different look to the, the actual golf club. It, you know, it almost kind of gives you a bit more confidence when you're playing these type of shots because you can see with the rounding of the bottom edge, it kind of sits into the ball a little bit nicer and 
kind of wants to try and get under it a bit more for you. So from this type of shot, it's, it's almost making it slightly easier. So now to the torso, which has got less um, bounce, a bit more taken off the back of the golf club there. So sits a little bit tighter to the ground and certainly for that player who you know who wants to maybe open the face on a few as well from this distance potentially it would be something that would interact with the turf slightly differently so again nice low checky flight that it's coming off with feels great off the face um, but to me just as i'm playing the shots there it just feels nicer as it's going into the turf i can really start to you know, manipulate the, the golf club as I want to when I, when I chip and actually get that feel that I'm looking for when I'm playing a shot like this. And it, it really does suit my eye quite nicely. And like I say, when you open the face on it, because of that lower bounce, you get that shot that you can get under a little bit more and sort of play that shot. So if you're wanting to open the face on it off a tighter lie close to the green there, that torso is going to help to do that for you. It's going to help get under the ball a little bit more and play that shot that you want to. So that's all of them from closer to the green. Let's play some bunker shots as well and see how they perform out of there. So now we're down here in the bunker. Let's test all four of the different head designs again and see how they perform out of the sand. So to start with, we've got the standard sole in the 54 degree, so a sand wedge loft. Um, let's try and play a few shots from here. So on this wedge, we've got 12 degrees of bounce, which is kind of ideal really for a bunker shot. Let's play a few and see how it performs through the sand. A little bit firm, that one. I must mention this sand is very wet from all the rain that we've had in the last couple of days, but it's no excuse. We should still be able to play a good bunker shot. Good, it goes through the sand really nicely. I say it's a bit lower loft than what I would normally use from this sort of position downhill, but it feels great off the face. We're getting a nice bit of check on it when it lands as well. Feels really, really good. Let's try one of the other grinds. So from there, we've got the standard sole. Let's go to the wide one, which really is made for bunker shots, okay? So this with the slightly more bounce at 14 there and the, and the bigger sole and particularly towards the toe end of the club there it's much wider this should really help us to get through the sand and get that ball out easier okay that absolutely flew out of there so really easy to play this type of shot with you don't need loads of power on it the wedge almost helps you to get it out of the bunker so that extra bit of grind on there is interacting with the sand a little bit more so the speed at which i'm playing the shots doesn't have to be as much you see it's coming out and just releasing then towards the hole so this club in that wide sole is really tailored to helping you get it out of the sand here so let's try the i2 design all right now this with it being slightly lower about so we've got eight degrees out of here and a slightly more loft on it um, should lend itself quite well to hitting this bunker shot because it's still got quite a wide sole there even though the bounce isn't interacting quite as much so let's play a few with this as well like i say it's a 60 degree so we'd expect a little bit more height maybe a bit more stop on it so very easy through the sand like i say i think it's a it's a design that you'd grow to love. I mean, it's very different to a lot of the wedges out there on the market. And certainly with that little bit of offset on the bottom of it, I think players will like that little bit of help too, um, because it's gonna help you to get through the sand better and pop these balls out a little bit easier. So again, that eye sole really works lovely out of the bunkers. Now the next one, the tour sole, is the one that I'm probably the most worried about out of a situation like this, because it's the lowest bounce um may dig a little bit on a bunker shot this wet wet bunker might show it up a little bit more hopefully but it might be a bit difficult to play this type of shot purely because of how sharp this this wedge is so yeah that was a little bit thin coming out very difficult to actually get the strike on so out of a bunker 
this torso, although I've preferred it for the pitch shots and the green side ones when it's interacting with turf, slightly different when you're playing it out the bunker. So um, it's a little bit more difficult to get it under the, the ball consistently. And I think if I was looking at these wedges myself, I'd probably try and mix the, the head designs up a little bit. So I'd have something in like a 56 with, um, with the standard sole or the wide sole on to help me in these situations. And then maybe in my 60 like this, use the tour sole because then I can play those shots, flop shots over bunkers, things like that, where we've got less bounce, a little bit more off the back edge and make my short game a bit more versatile. And that's why the Glide 3 range is so good because you can select the different head designs in the different lofts to really build your short game around there. So it gives you so much variety and ability to hit different shots around the greens and into the greens. So there we have it. We've tested them all from the different types of lie. And to be honest, really, really good wedges. Love them all. Very different in their own way at different shots, but certainly ones you should be looking at when you're out there selecting a wedge this season. So we've tested those wedges pretty comprehensively here around the greens, pitching, chipping, and also hitting some bunker shots to really test out the different head designs and show you exactly what they do. Hope that's made it a little bit clearer for you. Let us know if this is a wedge that you want to try. Is it something that you're looking to put in your bag this season? Comment below and let us know any questions you have. If you haven't already done so, hit the subscribe button and see loads more content about the latest golf clubs coming out in 2019. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you all very soon.